Hey there, my name is Promise, and welcome to Dune Spice Wars. We took a look at this game back when it first entered it into Early Access in 2022, and we found it was a fascinating blend between 4X and real-time strategy, of course set in Frank Herbert's harsh desert world of Arrakis. Since that video, there have been several major rebalances for the game, including the addition of a new game mode, multiplayer, and a couple of new factions. But of course, the objective remains the same, the spice must flow, and all of this culminates in today's full release of Dune Spice Wars. And to celebrate that moment, the developer and publisher Shiro Games has offered a sponsor for me today to take a look at the game and show you what it has to offer. And of course, I'm very excited to accept that because I do genuinely think this is a pretty exciting game. So of course, a big thank you to them for the sponsorship, and if you guys like what you see and you want to learn more, there will, as always, be that link in the description down below. Without any further ado, let's go ahead and jump into a single player game and I'll show you how this is going to work. Now, the Battle for Arrakis is the classic game mode, and that's what we'll play with today. Though there are two other options. You have a duel and conquest mode. This is new and pretty fun, but it does require a basic understanding of the game to really enjoy it fully. This is kind of like a roguelike version of the game where you play several different successive maps with randomized objectives, modifiers, and rewards which support your larger campaign. It's awesome, but again, this is a better introduction of the game, hence why we're going to go with this. Now in the battle for Arrakis, you have to choose from one of six different factions. Yes, six. They've added two new ones since the game first came out. We have the classic House Atreides, the good guys, the Harkonnen, the bad guys, the smugglers, and the native Fremen. Added since early access began is House Carino, the Imperial household, and most recently House Ekaz, led by Cruella de Vil. Sorry, I mean Archduchess Armanda Ekaz. Which is interesting, by the way, because I don't remember an Armanda from the books, though I do remember an Archduke Armand Ekaz, and I'm pretty sure almost the entire family is dead by the time that the Atreides go to Arrakis. So this is kind of one of those creative liberties moments. This game is not trying to be entirely lore accurate to the books. If it were, then the Atreides would start with the charter for the governorship right off the bat, and there would be kind of no point for a lot of this. So expect this game to be kind of loosely based on the lore and the characters and the themes, but not exactly perfect, and I think you'll have a better time with it. Anyway, let's go ahead and play with House Carino. Now, these guys are interesting because they are encouraged to play tall and not wide. We're going to have extra building slots, but every time we annex a village, the further away it is, the more it's going to cost us in our authority, which means we're not going to be able to spread ourselves very wide. We can counteract this slightly by placing down a second main base at some point, but it's only going to do so much. Tall, not wide. That's just the way of it. Now, no matter what house you choose, you have to bring along two out of four counselors, and these guys are based on the other characters from the books, and can change your game up drastically. For example, we have Wencicia Carino. We can build a second copy of a building in a village. That can be very good in certain circumstances. However, if we only have one copy, we pay double the upkeep, so it penalizes you if you don't take advantage of this new mechanic. Very good in some cases, but very difficult if you don't play around it. That's said high risk, high reward, I think we go with it. We have Captain Aramsham, the leader of the Sadakar. I could see that being good for your military. Princess Irulan, very famous from the books, gives us extra power in our votes in the Lansrod, which is kind of like the Senate, Ruling Council, the UN, effectively kind of like that from other games. And we can form alliances with neutral sieges. And then finally we have Hasimir Fenring. Uh, discoveries can be done anywhere, and we can build investments on the villages of other factions if we have a truce with them. But that won't last forever because once you start running away with the game, the AI does like to target you. I'm going to go with Princess Irulan and Princess Wincisia. And here comes our Imperial ship. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and pause here because this is a real-time strategy game and time does matter. Now, I say it's a real-time strategy game, and it is. However, you should be aware that if you're going to be playing this game, do not treat it like games like, let's say, Age of Empires or Homeworld, where you just simply gather up resources and try to harass your opponents until you win. That's not going to work very well. This game is very much a 4X game. It's more like Civ in that way. So you need to be focusing on building up your economy, your espionage, your diplomacy, and use the military as a tool, not as your primary weapon. If you can do that and build up and snowball quickly, you're going to be in really good shape. But settle up for the long haul. That's how this game works. Now I'm going to go ahead and build up a second scout on Ornithopter, and we're going to build up two conscript swordsmen over here because I need to gather up some villages and annex them as quickly as possible, specifically for the spice. This is our field over here. We need this. The spice is absolutely key for a strong economy in this game. 
As you explore some regions, you'll find there are points of interest. Your ornithopters will be able to explore these for you, and we need to find these villages. Let's grab my units and start immediately moving over in this direction. Notice the military units have two bars over their head. We have a green health bar and a yellow supply bar. When you leave your own territory, you're going to start consuming supplies. And if you run out of supplies, your units are going to die because Arrakis is extremely harsh in that way. The more water you produce, the longer your range is going to be, which makes it very important. Anyway, let's attack this town because they have two militia units and I want to annex these guys. I'm going to send one of my units over here to harass their uh, range units so they do half damage. Because they don't like being in melee combat. And then once I have that taken care of, let's go ahead and focus fire on this one unit like so. Perfect. The Ornithopter is still looking around. What I'm looking for right now are points of interest that indicate extra resources in a specific zone. I'm looking for things like minerals. That's going to be very important. Finding a rare elements over here is actually pretty good. I'm okay with that. That means we can get a lot of Solari. Now, I'm talking about a lot of things you haven't heard about. What am I looking for? Well, the resources we need in the beginning of the game are Solari. This is your income. Plascrete, which is used for building pretty much everything. And manpower for training units. We also have fuel cells, water, and authority. Authority is used to annex villages. The more you produce, the faster you expand, the better. But overall, what you really need is spice. Spice is necessary to, one, make money, and second, meet taxes. Okay, this is actually a very interesting map for me. So we found some minerals. This is going to boost up Plascrete. This has to be my second area of expansion. But with the rare elements, this could be a really good third expansion for us. And it stacks up very nicely with our specific counselor setup. I'll explain more about that later. There are some special geographical features, which is why I'm kind of exploring as aggressively as I can over here. For example, we found a space cruiser wreck. If we can take this over, we'll get some favor with the spacing guilds. I could see that being strong. Okay, we have now finished killing the militia in this territory. We're going to go ahead and annex this. You can see it cost me 41 authority to do so. And we have to leave our units around over here in order to take it over. And now that we've conquered this village, let's go ahead and extract some buildings. We want to go ahead and place down a refinery immediately, because this is how we get our spice. You can also get some militia in your local villages. Uh, it costs some manpower to do this, but they don't have any upkeep associated, and they're very good for some early defense against other players or against neutral raids. So I'm going to go ahead and spend a lot on that. Manpower is also used to heal your units, by the way. So you're going to need a fair bit of this. They don't just kind of passively regenerate their health. Now that we've got our first uh, village, we should also go and do some research. I'm going to pick up solid materials to start. This is going to reduce the construction costs of all of our buildings and boost up our Plascrete production. And we also probably want to go for Megalopolis after this. And then, what do we want? Probably Administrative Consolidation and then Advanced Engineering. All of those could be solid to boost up our economy very early on. I'll explain more about that in a second. Now, something important to note about every village, they're going to have two traits associated with them. So in this case, we can have an extra militia slot, and we can have extra research hubs in this particular town. That could be pretty good. Over here in Talrek, we have extra manpower if we have at least one building of every type, and extra experience for military units. Okay. What about over here? We can get extra resources when we're pillaging villages, or buildings construct uh, a lot cheaper. And that could be really, really good for me. Actually, I want to get this early. The point being that you should always be looking around on the map and trying to plan out your expansion based on, one, what kind of resource advantages do you have in certain zones, and two, what kind of bonuses can they produce? Certain villages are going to need to be specialized. Okay, our refinery is done. That means we have a harvester. I'm going to deploy this thing, and it's going to be moved over here to the spice field to start the extraction. I've also got my third ornithopter. Let's get over here. Now, whenever you are extracting spice, there is a chance you are going to attract the attention of some sandworms, and they'll swallow up your harvester, and you'll lose all your production. That sucks. The ornithopter can be attached onto your harvester to detect any uh, sandworms early, which is obviously great, and boost up spice production by 5%. I like that. Now, in order to reduce the odds of you getting detected by a sandworm and swallowed up, you can enable the auto recall. And this is good in the sense that if you're not paying attention, you know, this is a way of saving your harvester so you can focus elsewhere on the map. It does reduce your spice production, though, so it's a little risky in that sense, but I think it's still going to be worth it because I don't want to risk it. We can also send some manpower over here to uh, use an extra crew. That boosts up spice production by another 15%. I could see that being great. And now you can see that we are producing 29 spice. So with this, some of it's going to the stockpile, and some is being sold to the Cho'em market for 
some Solari. What we need to worry about right now is making sure that we pay the Spacing Guild's fees. They require spice in order for us to use that. No Spacing Guild, and we lose the monopoly on the ability to travel in space. That's a problem. No, I'm not going to be the Emperor for very long. So they demand a certain amount per contract. What we're going to do is reduce how much uh, is going to the stockpile. So we're just a bit over what we need in order to pay our fee, and that's going to come due in about 14 days. The rest gets sold to boost up our Solari income. The more spice we produce, the more I can stockpile, the more that I'm able to sell off in the Choa market so I can boost up my economy. If you can find additional spice sources, that's obviously very, very important for you. This village is about to be mine. Okay, my units can start healing. That's great. Over here, let's immediately start placing down some Plascrete factories since we get a bonus here. That makes some sense. I'll also go ahead and attach at least a little bit of militia to make sure we're safe. And over here, um, I would say get some Plascrete. However, remember, if we don't build a second copy of the building, we get a huge upkeep penalty. So do we want this or do I want other things to be placed here? Yeah, or we could place down some research hubs since that's something this place is really good at. And with a lot of research hubs, we'll be able to start getting some faster technology. I'm going to take a risk and go for the research hubs, even though I think technically Plascrete could be more valuable. Now, I do want to conquer this territory over here, but I can't do anything until I have a bit more authority. So we're just going to leave these guys be for the moment. Do I want to go and attack another village and just go for, let's say, some raiding for extra Solari early on? Could be good, might be a bit risky, because once it's raided, you're not able to annex it for a while. I think I'll leave that be. How are we doing on developments? We have the solid materials. We have the megalopolis. All right, now we're working on the consolidation. So this is going to double up the traits of these villages and boost their power by a lot. You can imagine over here, for example, boosting up the number of research hubs we can have and their production to 40% obviously stacks up really nicely. One of the reasons that I want to go for the early research hubs. It's a gamble, but if it works, it's great. Ah, and we did find another spice field over here. Okay, so this needs to be a somewhat high priority. Not the highest priority, but a high priority nonetheless. Okay, one Plascrete building done. We are now going into the negative on Solari because, yeah, that upkeep can really hurt. Let's go ahead and get myself that second Plascrete factory immediately. And over here, we have some research done. I guess I'll go ahead. Well, I mean, the cost of this is pretty darn high. Uh, eh, but I still think that we need to get the extra research. We're already paying the upkeep. There's no downside to building a second copy of this at least. So we'll do that and try to get as much out of this as possible. Faster research just means I can get an advantage over my enemies, hopefully. Oh, and we have our first agent. Okay, so agents are like your spies. These guys are critically important early on. Let's go ahead and send these guys to Arrakis. By sending these guys to infiltrate Arrakis, the planet itself, we'll start getting some extra authority generation, which is good. We'll also be able to use them on several discoveries, which I haven't talked about. You can also send them to the Spacing Guild for Manpower and Intel. We can go to the Choam Market for Solari, or the Lance Rod for extra influence, which is important when you have some uh, votes coming up. We'll worry about the rest of that in a little bit, though. What are discoveries? It's these points of interest over here. So if we send, let's say, some military units to investigate, we could get some spice. If I want to spend some money, we can go ahead and just buy some spice. Or if we want to use the spy we now have in Arrakis, we can start working on some uh, research boost for the military development area. Let's go ahead and do that. That's worth it. I mean, I like Solari, but I also like being able to get a boost in my military. And let's send this guy over here, investigate, and just grab the extra 58 spice. That'll be helpful. Now that I have three units, let's go ahead and attack down over here. We should be able to take this. I should have enough authority for this as well. So this is going to end up being very strong for me, I am hoping. We'll get that rare elements. We can place down processing plants to get a lot of Solari. And since I'm able to place down a second copy of the same building, this is going to be really good. And we can place it down for cheap. I mean, there, there's no losing here. This is going to be great. All right, the Landsrod Council is coming together. We can see that they are about to host some votes. So, do we want to have, uh, let's say, research investments, economy development completion speed is increased. I like this idea. Statecraft development completion increased also could be good, though I like economy better. And also, we could get some free military units, which are probably going to kill my economy, but they would ultimately be allowed to go and do some fighting for me. All this could be good. We have votes, so do all of our other buddies, except for the smugglers. They've got none at the moment. And then there are the minor factions, which will vote in a lot of different directions. I'm going to support the research investments, and we're just going to go ahead and pour everything I've got into this right now, because I really want to be getting that. 
The rest I don't care about right now. It's generally better to put all your votes into one thing you really care about and not spread them out too much, because you never know what the other players are going to do. There are, by the way, some important charters up here. These are like government offices, and they can give you some really, really valuable bonuses. But they're extremely competitive, and people will fight you tooth and nail. And ultimately, the goal is to gain the governorship of Dune, of uh, Arrakis itself. Hold on to this for long enough, and you win the game. Now, I'm going to go ahead and double up even further on some of these research hubs. Let's spend some of our Plascrete to open up another building slot and then get another research hub. Because we've got some huge benefits. This is plus 40% in this region right now. So, like, why the heck not? It's just too good to say no. There we go. This territory is now mine. Let's go over here and we want to place down the processing plant, boosting up that Solari production by a lot. Let's go ahead and place this immediately. A raid has been detected. All right, so these guys are going to come and attack my town over here. Could send the military to go and defend it, but since I do already have four militia, we should easily be able to handle this. I really don't think I'm worried about it. Yeah, case in point. This guy attacked, and here come all the militia. They're not as strong as real military units, but they're often good enough to do the job. First round of taxes are coming due in just a moment. We have plenty in stock, so we'll be able to give away a lot of this. And the Choen market is going to be changing the exchange rate at some point. Sometimes the rate is really low and you want to stockpile lots of your spice. And other times it's pretty high and you want to try and sell off as much as you can. Now, with our taxes paid, we've gained some hegemony points. Hegemony is a way of winning the game. The first of 30,000 wins, which is great. But also, once you get above 2,500, you can start building out some special stuff in your capital city. So we could build out, let's say, an administrative hall, which boosts up our production of Solari in all villages and gets me more authority. That could be good. Recruitment center for manpower, the research center for extra knowledge. I like that. And we have a unique emperor monument, which gives me hegemony per day. And the district bonuses in this base is doubled. What does that mean? Well, some of these buildings you can see come in groups. We have one, two, and three. Depending on what you place here, if as long as you do several of the same type of building, you can get some bonuses. So for example, right here, we have one district. If I put, let's say, I don't know, a science building right here, a statecraft building, we'd reduce the cost of all statecraft developments by 20%. All right, but what if we place down instead two statecraft buildings here in this district? Instead, we would get this benefit, extra intel and influence production. Or we did all three, we would get the max influence and intel, etc. So all these benefits are pretty different, and you have to think through which ones do you really, really want, right? I like the extra Solari production quite a lot, but I'm only going to be able to get either two economic buildings here or three economic buildings here. So I kind of have to pick and choose which ones are the most important to me. In this case, I'm kind of thinking I might want to go for the Emperor Monument, get the hegemony up and running, and then we'll go for the Administrative Hall and some other economic building and try to just boost up my economy as much as possible. And the Emperor's Monument will double the amount of uh, Solari we get from this. So it's going to end up being 60 Solari production per day just from this bonus, not to mention everything else we get here. That could be pretty good. And it looks like the Lancerod just finished with their vote, which means now I just got a lot of access to these Lancerod Guard over here. So we've got some extra armies to work with. I could use that to go bully some people. Um, maybe raid a village like this one over here that I'm probably not going to take for a long time. So we might as well just enjoy some free Solari by killing them all. Of course, be wary that as we cross the desert, we might also attract the attention of a sandworm. It could swallow up your entire army. I've had that happen before. It's really demoralizing. Now, an important question you probably should be asking is, how do you actually, you know, like, uh, win the game? There's several different ways. First off, you can just kill everybody, and secondly, you can get up to 30,000 hegemony, and another way, of course, is to become the governor, and another way is actually to gain a controlling uh, share of the Choam market. This is going to open up in two days. It's kind of like a stock market. There's the Choam market. Let's go ahead and click on this. All right, stock market. Buy some shares early, and you can start getting some dividends from them. Uh, you'll also be able to eventually win the game by controlling 50% or more because you control basically the entire market. Once you have a monopoly, the game is over. So that's one thing we're going to do as this faction. We have a lot of benefits for playing as the Emperor and controlling as much of the Choam market as we can. And we actually start with a pretty significant number of shares. I've got 9% right off the bat compared to anyone else. So it's worth spending some of your money to go ahead and buy some of these. You're going to notice the prices start going up. This is just going to get more and more expensive. The earlier we pick this up, the better the value. Or, of course, we could sell our shares and hopefully get some sort of a profit, but I don't recommend it. There are some additional useful thresholds. So now that I have 10%, I can train mercenaries. I also get some extra influence production, which allows me to cast extra votes or sway the minor houses in the Lance Rod. Obviously pretty good. Sandworm detected. All right, so we're automatically going to be picking up our thing. You can see kind of the uh, sand rippling down over here. 
But yeah, there's a sandworm. Um, as long as this thing is here, I can't mine. This is the big risk to your spice production because uh, sometimes you're going to find your spice is just gone. If you're not producing any spice, well, guess what? You're not going to make up your taxes. So always worth targeting just a little bit more than they ask for, just for security. Looks like it's gone. We can go ahead and redeploy our harvester, and that gets my money back up and running. All right. Over here, let's go ahead and send all of these guys to come and destroy this particular town. I want to take this one over. It gets me closer to another round of spice, and obviously I want that. Every once in a while, you're going to get some quests as you play this game. Some sort of a mission over here. A renowned merchant, for example... Has 33 days left to finish this. We have two options. We can either build more economic buildings, and the more we build up to a maximum of 10, we get permanent Solari production. Well, that's good. Or pillage five villages and get 600 Solari per village you purge. On the other hand, bribe someone with a lot of money to get some extra standing with the lance rod, or spend a lot of influence in order to gain a agent with political mastermind as a trait. All of that could be good. What is the Lance Rod standing, by the way? That is a necessary prerequisite in order to gain any of these seats of office. If you don't have enough standing, they will not even consider you for the position. Oh, very good. I finally got the filtration systems. Okay, now I can start building some much better water production buildings. Getting three water with a dew collector is not great. Getting a wind trap where you get two water per level of wind is much better because every tile has a certain wind level. In this case, six. So you can imagine getting 12 more water is really quite good. We can construct something else over here. Um, I could get some Solari production of fully built villages, or I can make it a lot easier to get harvesters for my... Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and boost up my spice production. I can see that being good, especially since I'm really close to being able to get a second spice harvester. I just need more Imperial Authority. All right, finally time to make my move over here. I actually have a bit more authority than I thought I was going to. Let's go ahead and take these guys out. Flamethrower is pretty good, by the way. They do a lot of cone area of effect damage. <laughs> I like that. There we go. Okay, with this, definitely get myself another refinery up and a running. And in this province over here, I built up a spice silo, which gets me 20% more production in neighboring regions. So both of these areas are going to get a 20% boost in spice. Well, these are the kind of moments I'm looking for. Looks like the Choam market is starting to dip down a little bit. That's it. Time to buy the dip. Buy the dip, everybody. Buy the dip. At this point, I have enough resources. I can use my special ability. Drop a new main base, which I'm going to do right over here. The reason for this being, uh, this is going to uh, extend my reach rather substantially. So now I can start absorbing some of these regions over here. And it's not going to cost me anywhere near as much authority to do so. Yeah, see, now this only cost me 89 authority. Earlier, it cost me like 300. That's the advantage of this. And actually, this comes at a really good time. Looks like this house is trying to make a push on another spice field right next to my new Imperial base. The Emperor might have something to say about that. Um, surprise! The Emperor declares this is his land now. More spice fields for me. Okay, now here comes one of those important seats I was talking about. So we would get extra Solari for every extra water I've got if I can control the Water Cellars Union. I will happily spend a fair bit of my um, influence and all of my votes on this one. I imagine House Atreides is going to try to go for it as well. So I will spend a bit more votes on this, but I'm kind of hoping that we're still going to have enough that we win this one. It would really suck if I don't. Now, something else I'll go ahead and do is get over here to House of Cause and start fighting them. They have a special ability to create champion units, which are extra, extra strong. But slaughtering their champion surely is going to do something. Oh, gosh. Sandstorm detected. Sandstorm detected. All right. This big sucker's about to come through. Any ornithopters or other uh, flying units are going to take massive amounts of damage. Aha! I did get the Water Cellars Union. Good lord, the smugglers threw a lot of votes into this one. Holy crud. Anyway, we get the Water Cellars Union. Even more Solari for me! That's great. That's really good, actually. That means that I'll be able to spend my Solari to get more shares. And let's see, I could try to raid this village. They've got, it looks like, four militia units. I'm pretty sure I could just go ahead and attack these guys and hopefully take them all out. Whether I want to take the city for myself, different question. I could just raid it and really hurt their ability to produce more Solari. Ah, dang it. All right, people passed a law where um, we lose all of our charters, including the Atreides. They didn't even manage to grab anything here. So we lost the Water Cellars Union, and that just sucks across the board. That sucks. Thanks, guys. Um, the Atreides are really good at the diplomatic game, and they very often go hard on these charters. Like, they're, they're doing really well here. I'm not going to lie. They're doing better than I am. All right, I don't feel proud about this, but uh, Atreides, you continue to be a bit of a problem for me. I think we need to end this uh, non-aggression pact thing and go back into conflict. So um, I'm going to go and raise your stuff now. 
And I kind of have the advantage, because I've got Sardaukar, the best fighters in the known empire. Well, what do you have, exactly? Not Sardaukar. Even better, I have a frigate. Ha 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 ha! The Kronos has arrived! Should be able to cause an absolute ton of mayhem using this. All right, every faction is able to get some sort of a frigate. The way you do that is by getting uh, a lot of opinion with the spacing guild themselves. I mean, you spend like a hundred of that in order to get something here. You could also get some other smaller flying units. They control all flying things, but the hammer is not especially good, so I, I, don't, I don't really care about this. But the Kronos, the Kronos feels pretty awesome. So this is the advantage of having a lot of water production. I can go ahead and charge directly into enemy territory and try to inflict some serious damage on them I normally wouldn't be able to. We got a lot of extra range on our boys, and surprisingly, so far, no sandworms to eat my guys, which is good. I, I would prefer they didn't. Oh god, is that a sandworm? I think it's sand- ah, uh, 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 Everyone get, uh, spread out, spread out, spread out as much as you can. A sandworm could easily pop out and kill my units right now. Woo! Okay, I saw very barely that ripple right there. It could still happen, technically. We're danger close, but I think we're okay. Try not to walk in the deep desert, please. You use up so many supplies whenever you step in the deep desert. Oh god, another sandworm came through! Okay, um, right. I think I may just be about to lose some units here. I definitely have lost some units here. Didn't even notice that! Oh, okay. Well, um, fortunately it attacked before my entire army committed to that direction. That would have been very, very bad. And this tells me there is definitely a sandworm just sort of hanging out, so we're not gonna go through there for a second. <laughs> yeah, it's still around. I'm still watching the ripples. It's moving, it's moving. Oh boy, oh boy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Don't, don't, don't fall for that. Get under the rocks, get onto the rocks, get onto the rocks, please and thank you, holy crud. Now, unfortunately, I'm in a position where I now need to break my alliance with a cause, because they're getting close to a hegemony victory. And that's partly because they hold things like the Polar Sink here in the middle, which is giving them a lot of hegemony here. The more of these special zones you own, the more you gain. There's an Imperial Basin over here, too. Man, I wish I could control all of this, but unfortunately, I'm really bad at spreading out as this faction. Everything costs too much of my authority. Still, if I can at least liberate some of these zones and prevent a cause from having it, we can reset them a little bit, and that would be smart. Aha! This is what we're looking for. The governorship. I'm currently the only person with enough lance rod standing to actually get this, and I do have two charters. I need only one. So if I can get enough uh, influence together, we might be able to get this. Which is weird, because I'm the emperor. Y you'd think that this would be easy. Ah, dang it! Alright, I put 400 votes into this, and 519 votes went into declining on this. Oh, no. Yeah, see, I told you. They, they really don't want me to get that. For some reason. Who would have guessed? Whatever, it's fine. Got 38% control of the Choam market as well. So between hegemony, diplomacy, and um, the Choam economic victory, I'm I'm pushing pretty close on three different avenues. Oh, -ho! I just watched that guy get swallowed up. <laughs> sucker. Okay, now I control the polar sink. Good, 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 good. All right, with this sucker, we even stole a masterpiece. That's hilarious. Uh, we want to get more of these crafts workshops I was talking about. Let's go ahead and start farming out that hegemony. We're not going to lose this race, dang it. Oh, the Akaz are actually trying to make a counterattack. That's cute. I'm going to go ahead and just spend a little bit of money to quickly shuttle all of these uh, melee units and such over here. So that's why I've got airfields set up in a few different spots. We'll just go ahead and pack them up, and off they go, and we'll be able to rapidly transit across the map. <laughs> Suckers! And that's what we call a pretty tidy ambush. Run, you fools! <laughs> Tell you one thing I can do that's gonna help me win the game a lot faster, though. Let's just go ahead and take this from them. This is the Crescent Ridge. It's got some hegemony. It's worth a thousand. If I can conquer this, um, we'll be less than a thousand away from winning the game. Lose authority and standing for claiming a garden resort. I'm gonna accept that anyway because this is going for checkmate, dang it. And there we go! That actually was exactly how much I needed. Perfect timing! Your indisputable hegemony has led to the Lansrad, recognizing you as the leader of Arrakis. Good, that makes sense, for I am Emperor. Now see, that worked out pretty darn well. I mean, yeah, I would have preferred to be able to go for the economic victory or the diplomatic or something. That would have been cool. Military victories are actually really hard to pull off in Doom because the main bases themselves are really quite strong. Still, now that you have an idea how all that works, you can imagine if you jumped into something like Conquest and played as one of these houses here, for example. And then you load up a big map like this, and you get to choose between some randomized special abilities. For example, um, the effects of High Lance Rod standing are doubled. Makes sense for the Atreides. 
and you get to choose, well, which of uh, these uh, areas do I want to go into? Do I want to go for strategic expansion and gain hegemony over this region? Or do I want to just gain control over a certain amount of land? And if you complete that, you get a bonus uh, that you can take for the rest of the campaign. Secondary objectives exist as well, right? Conquer enough of the map, and boom, all of a sudden, we are the undisputed leader of Arrakis. That's conquest mode. Overall, really, really fun experience, I think. Now, again, you have to play this like a 4X game. If you're playing this as an RTS, you're gonna die. <laughs> I played the long game, I played the economy, even though I had to build tall and couldn't build out very wide, and it worked out pretty nicely for me. Akaz gave me a run for their money, though. If she kept going a bit wider than that, she actually had a good chance of beating me to it. And Atreides, they could have beaten me on the diplomatic victory. So the AI likes playing to their strengths, and they're surprisingly pretty competent at it. Does mean that there's quite the challenge going forward in every game. Anyway, that's a good look at Dune Spice Wars. Once again, thank you to the developers and publisher Shiro Games for the sponsorship. Very much appreciated, and I had a lot of fun. If you guys did enjoy this video and you want to learn more about the game, then of course there's going to be that link in the description down below. Otherwise, I would ask you to hit that like button, leave a comment, subscribe, hit that notify bell, and I will see you guys next time.